So, of course, the big news is, well, it's not really big news, it happened years ago. Back in 2011, APNIC ran out of its general use addresses. We reserved one slash eight that we hand out in relatively small amounts. After that, in 2012, the RIPE NCC ran out and they too reserved a slash eight. Then along came LACNIC, they ran out, but they ran out differently. They have a much smaller pool of residual addresses. And then most recently, last year, Aaron ran out and their pool of residual addresses is actually incredibly small and it's quite hard to obtain. So as usual, I did some statistics on run out rates and what it looks like is that in the current area, APNIC has half of that remaining slash eight left. And in the absence of panic, in the absence of a rush at the counter, it'll probably last another two years or so. And then there will really will be nothing left for APNIC. Now, nothing doesn't mean you can't get addresses. What it means is you can't go to the APNIC and say, you know, here APNIC, give me some. There will be none. So we expect transfers to increase. Now, APNIC runs a log. Every time a transfer is registered in the registry, we record it in a log. So I've started to look at that, looking at what's happening. So the interesting news to some extent is the transfer market's really quite small. The number of addresses that have been transferred fall in the low millions, whereas APNIC itself has handed out, um, if I remember rightly, it's a little under a billion addresses. So low millions, one billion, the amount of addresses moving around currently is quite small. And I also looked at who's importing and who's exporting in terms of addresses. Where are they coming from? Where are they going to? One of the major feeds is the old legacy addresses that are being sourced from predominantly North America. And the predominant consumer, the buyer, is predominantly China. But of course, there are regional variations, different buyers and sellers. I don't know pricing. It's none of my business. But I am interested in these kinds of trends of who's buying, who's selling and why, and if you will, what's the pressure on addresses. And currently what it seems is that we're not using transfers as the solution of first resort. That right now we're turning up the level of intensity of network address translation. That what we see instead in a lot of the new networks is almost everyone is sitting behind some kind of NAT structure. And so the need to get more addresses is actually quite heavily damped. And the transfer market, it's operating, but it's not a significant factor in the overall address deployment realm. It's hard to see what happens. When we look at the comparable world of V6, our figures tend to indicate that right now V6 is around 6 to 7% of the internet. But that figure belies a quite a radical difference. In the US, the major provider there is running at 80%. Even in Western Europe, we're seeing figures of 60, 70, 80% in the UK, in Germany, and in certain providers in France. So some areas, particularly of the developed world, are heavily invested in V6, and realistically are now deploying en masse. And so how long do we have to keep the NATs running? How long does this sort of fractured world and reliance on transfers still exist before somebody is willing to say, I'm all V6 and I'm proud to say it. Now I suspect right now the largest retail network in the world, which is Comcast, is very close to be able to say that. That their deployment across their infrastructure is almost complete and that most of their customers are now using this as a matter of course. What we're going to see now is this kind of pressure where the folk who haven't moved in V6 now start to confront the real problem that somehow, if Comcast do say it's all V6, to reach those folk, you've got to do six. And the transfer market in four won't help you anymore. It's a different problem. When this will happen, really hard to tell. So what we're trying to do with these presentations is to offer statistics and information to try and make sure that the folk who are putting their money on the table, who are actually creating and writing these services and creating retail markets from it, understand the bigger picture of where they sit and why they're sitting in it and what shapes and forces are at work that will change that picture over the coming years.